Um, thanks very much to the organizers uh, for this opportunity to present. So I'm going to be presenting some work that we've been doing in South Africa for a few years, um, <clears throat> presenting, as you can see, on behalf of quite a big team. So just to put you in the picture, um, HIV is still a major cause of mortality and morbidity, um, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. But it's not the same disease that it was, say, 20 to 25 years ago, when a diagnosis of HIV was effectively, effectively a death sentence. So ART has drastically changed that. And people who are today diagnosed as HIV positive, assuming they take treatment, have very good life expectancy um, in high-income countries. So not only are numbers of deaths that are HIV-related falling, but also mortality patterns related to HIV. So the graph at the bottom there is some data from South Africa. And you can see the gradual incline in life expectancy. The x-axis there is 2001 to 2014. These are quite small numbers. This is one particular area in South Africa. That graph is much steeper for high-income countries, so the UK and much of Europe and the US. Um, <clears throat> on the right-hand side is something that's looking at cause-specific mortality. So you can see the first of those four graphs in the top left-hand corner is all-cause mortality, which is dropping. But the second, the top right graph, which is the most drastic, is AIDS-related deaths. So this is deaths due to advanced immunosuppression in HIV-positive people. And you can see quite a steep decline there uh, the longer people are on ART. That's not necessarily the case in low- and middle-income countries, in particular sub-Saharan Africa. So I'm sure many of you are aware of the UN AIDS goal to reduce HIV-associated mortality. Um, in the, next, uh, in the next five years. But still, in 2016, there were a million AIDS-related deaths globally, and 72% 72 72 of those were in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, this map is from a study from a few years ago where people assessed civil registration and vital statistics systems. And this is the way most high-income countries get their mortality statistics, essentially from debt certification that are then collated centrally and generate those cause of debts lists that we're all so familiar with. However, you can see basically this map, red is bad, green is good, and white means there's no data. And you can see it's mostly red or white, uh, with the exception of South Africa. And that's a story in itself. So. If these are what the systems are like, where do we actually get our mortality data from for these countries? <clears throat> um, and the answer is extrapolation and modeling for, for the most part. So, sorry, I mentioned this a slide too early. UNAIDS targets are to reduce HIV-related deaths drastically in the next few years. And one of the interim targets is to have less than half a million deaths by 2020. We saw that we had a million deaths just last year, so that's quite a drastic reduction in the next three years or so. One of the problems with that is that the way we actually count HIV-related mortality is not particularly robust. So we only count HIV-associated deaths if we know them to be HIV-associated. And what actually makes up an HIV-associated death is going to change, as we've seen from the previous slides, as more and more people have access to ART. Um, the other issue, as we saw, is that civil registration systems are not particularly robust in these parts of the world. And as an interim measure, verbal autopsy is used to fill in the gaps. It's used primarily at health and demographic surveillance sites, which tend to be in rural areas and have a, um, and surveil a fixed population. However, VA for HIV and TB in particular has not, has not been very well tested. So what is a VA? I'm sure some of you are very familiar with it. Um, essentially, it's just an interview with, with the relatives or the carer of somebody who's died. It's evolved quite a lot over the last 30 years or so. Um, first started being used in the late 1980s, and it was used in different parts of the world, but it was used very inconsistently. So everybody had their own questionnaire, and the way it was interpreted was very different. Since the early 2000s, there have been 
uh, considerable efforts to standardize, and there's now a WHO standardized VA instrument, um, and also standardized ways to interpret VA data and assign causes of death accordingly. And as you can see from this slide, there are lots and lots of people working on, um, <coughs> on VA methods in particular, and ways to interpret the data. So traditionally, VA data are interpreted by physicians, uh, two physicians who assign what they consider to be the most likely cause of death based on the answers to the question. But as you can imagine, that is time consuming, it's expensive and difficult to standardize across different contexts. It depends on the experience of your physicians and the quality of your data. So there's increasingly there's a push to do this through automated methods um, and lots of different people have tried different approaches and these are just some of the approaches that have been tried in this regard. <coughs> VA, as I said, is used primarily at health and demographic surveillance sites. So the map on the left here is of some of the sites from the in-depth network, which are a, a network of surveillance sites, um, mostly across sub-Saharan Africa, but there's also a number in Asia. Um, and what happens routinely at these sites is that every person who dies a VA is done, and then the data are interpreted, and they generate interpreted, interpreted, and they generate lists of course-specific mortality from those data. But as I said, most of these sites are in rural settings, so it's difficult to extrapolate from these data to more national scales. So what is being proposed and actually being implemented at the moment is a very ambitious project, the Data for Health Initiative, uh, which is primarily funded by, uh, I think. Uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies and involves Australian universities and a number of different partners. And they're looking to integrate verbal autopsy into routine civil registration um, activities. So outside of just a health and demographic surveillance setting. Now in principle, this is, a, this is a really good thing. We need better mortality data. They are the bedrock of so many of our health decisions, health economics and, um, sorry, uh, funding allocation in terms of the way we structure our health services. If we don't know what people are dying from, how do we plan for what to treat them for? However, as I said, VA hasn't necessarily been tested very well for HIV-related mortality specifically. Um, and many of the countries where this system is due to be rolled out, HIV plays a major part in the mortality burden. So with that in mind, <coughs> these are the aims that we set out to do. So compared with confirmed HIV status and ART status among a group of HIV positive and HIV negative adults, we aim to estimate, estimate the sensitivity and specificity of VA questions in assigning HIV status and detecting ART initiation. We also try, tested four different VA interpretation methods to and assess their specificity in assigning HIV associated causes of death. Um, and we unfortunately didn't have a, a reference standard cause of death for all of these individuals. So we attempted a proxy method to try and estimate, sort of estimate the sensitivity of some of these methods. Um, so the setting, this was a small mortality study that was nested within three very big HIV TB epi studies in, in all across South Africa. The names and details don't really matter, but these were mostly HIV positive adults who were attending primary health clinics. So they were ambulatory and fairly well. Most of our HIV positive de decedents came from the TB fast track study. Um, these were people with CD4 counts of less than 150 who hadn't been on ART for at least six months and hadn't had TB treatment for at least three months. We also sourced a number of HIV negative individuals to allow us to assess specificity of VA. And we went to five TB fast track hospitals and looked through the registers of, of the mortuaries at these hospitals and picked out people who were between 18 and 55 who had died from a hospital assigned cause of death that was not explicitly HIV associated or traumatic or pregnancy related. We then looked through their medical and laboratory records and found those who were confirmed HIV negative within a year of death. As you can imagine, this was a fairly time consuming procedure. Um, so just in terms of, that, that's some of the data collection activities that I've just described. So from various hospitals and clinics, 
The South Africa is lucky in that all its lab data go to a central database which can be accessed from anywhere. So we search that database as well for HIV test, test results. And all, most of the HIV positive individuals were enrolled in a parent study. So we had very good research data on some of them. We also did verbal autopsy using WHO 2012 instrument and interpreted this using both physician certified VA and three automated methods to give um, a cause of death. And then the analysis I'm presenting here today is would just be various fairly simple comparisons between those metrics. So uh, the organizers also asked us to speak about our part in this process. So um, I was really involved at pretty much all stages of this study and um, during the studies, uh, during the time we were carrying this out, this was my main activity. So coordinating data collection. Uh, we had a team of about five people who were doing the verbal autopsies. Um, there was quite a lot of data management involved, as you can imagine. Um, and one thing that I'm not talking about today is that we were doing minimally invasive autopsies on some of these people. And that was also extremely time consuming. And I was doing most of the autopsies mm -hmm. myself as well. Um, I've also been responsible for all the analysis and, and write-up. Right, sorry, there's a bit too much detail on this slide, but the three parent studies are the first column, the second, and the last column. Um, <clears throat> and you can see that from the TB Fast Track study, we did 212 verbal autopsies. All of these were HIV-positive adults. From the X-Factor study, we had 47 HIV-positive adults. From the EXTEND study, we had 137 verbal autopsies total. Eight, uh, eight were HIV negative and 97 were HIV positive. And then among the 266 HIV negative individuals that we found, we did 95 verbal autopsies, leaving us with a, a total sample for the analysis of 459 adults. Just briefly looking at the two groups, so um, the last column, they always say don't look at the p-value, but it's the quickest way um, in this case. And you can see, despite our best efforts of age matching, we were not successful in age matching. So the, our HIV negative group were significantly older than our HIV positive group. And that, to some extent, reflects the nature of the epidemic in South Africa. People dying are, on average, in their 30s. But um, pretty much everything else was similar across the two groups. Um, just to comment that the time from VA looks like a very, uh, time from death to verbal autopsy looks like a very long time, but it's actually well within the 12 months recommended by WHO for both groups. And actually there's evidence from the last couple of years that says it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Anything up to 18 months um, doesn't matter particularly. <coughs> oh, sorry, that title seems to have slipped off. Um, looking at our first objective, so in detecting HIV status, verbal autopsy, the verbal autopsy question was 84% specific and 94% sensitive. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong way around. 84% sensitive and 94% specific. Um, and this is similar to other studies. And it's actually, the sensitivity certainly has improved over the last few years. And we think that's primarily due to reductions in stigma. People are more happy to talk about being HIV positive or their loved one having been HIV positive. And also improved access to testing, so more people are aware of their status before they die. The ART question is fairly new. This is only the second study that's ever tested this formally. Um, and it was 91% uh, sensitive, but only 53% specific. And again, this is relatively understandable. HIV positive people have a very high pill burden. So particularly for their family to know whether or not the medication they were taking was actually ART or was one of the numerous other pills is difficult to know. So it may be that the question needs refining to improve the specificity. <coughs> In terms of the four... Um, computer-coded VA methods that we used. Physician-certified VA was 96% specific in detecting HIV-associated deaths. Um, and actually, all methods were, had high specificity. Um, because we didn't have a reference standard cause of death for these individuals, we were unable to really assess sensitivity. And this is the slightly unusual analysis. So we've got 
this is looking at a subset of the overall population. This is just the 356 HIV-positive adults. And this is the number of HIV-associated deaths assigned among HIV-positive adults only. You can see there's quite a lot of variability between these three methods. PCVA assigned 80% of HIV-positive people an HIV-associated cause of death. Inter-VA, only just under 50%. And version 1.1.1 of Smart VA analyze only 22%. And what's perhaps a little bit more worrying is when you combine those three diagrams, the overlap between the three methods is really quite limited. So only in 40 cases did the three methods agree that this individual had died from an HIV positive, uh, HIV associated cause. Um, and that lack of consistency. This is only among 350 individuals. So if we scale this up to several hundreds and thousands of deaths, those error margins are really quite large. I should say that there is a newer version of Smart VA Analyze, which is the software produced by IHME at the University of Washington. Um, and this seems to do much better um, in terms of HIV-associated deaths in particular. So uh, on the left is the older version. On the right is the newer version. You can see this is much closer to physician-certified VA, which for our purposes was the gold standard. You can see here the overlap. In this case, there are 121 people um, in whom all three methods agree, and um, almost 250 people where Smart VA Analyze and PCVA agreed. So just a summary of what we found. VA interpretation methods were not particularly consistent in assessing HIV-associated mortality, particularly among HIV-positive people. But the newer methods of smart VA analyzed, or the newer versions, did perform much better. VA questions, in general, were sensitive and specific uh, in detecting HIV status and sensitive for ART initiation. I think this is part of a bigger picture, in general, that says we need to do better at measuring cause-specific mortality in low- and middle-income countries, and particularly among HIV-positive people. Um, and we have some ideas of how this could be done. So the VA instrument for certain sections has discrete, instrument, uh, discrete modules which ask about particular issues. For example, there's a pregnancy module. There is a, a trauma module which asks very detailed questions about what are major causes of death, and we think for use in these areas that an HIV TB module would be appropriate and useful. Uh, we also think that similar to this study, future VA validation studies should test specific questions such as the question about ART, which has only just been included in the 2016 VA instrument. Um, and perhaps most importantly, the ICD system. We used ICD-10, but ICD-11 is due for release next year, apparently. Um, it needs to be flexible enough to allow us to record mortality in a way that is most useful to our needs. It's our system and it needs to work for us. So um, this is particularly the issue around HIV-associated TB. That's a whole another presentation, but um, including around recording all causes of mortality among HIV-positive people. Um, changes to ICD would be really useful in doing that. Um, Lots of people to thank. This was a big effort and a, a team effort, and our funding from the Gates Foundation, the various study teams, um, and the bottom right-hand corner, uh, your left, um, is other people who actually did most of the work that you've uh, that I've presented today. Thank you very much.